Hey folks, and welcome to this Guerrilla Guide Q&A show. Uh, I'm James Green. I'm a partner and the VP for content at Actual Tech Media. And we created this Guerrilla Guide Q&A show to basically take a topic and jump straight in. Uh, a lot of the events we run, there's a while where we listen to a presentation first, which are some of my favorites, and then we do a couple minutes of Q&A at the end. And we thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could do an event where just the whole thing is Q&A, and we just ask questions the whole time. We have a guest who's an expert, and we just pepper him or her with questions for a half an hour. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, Specifically, we're going to talk about cloud networking. And my expert guest for today uh, happens to have spent some time, a fair bit of time, as I think he'll tell you, in the networking space and uh, is, is capable of fielding all of our questions here. So I'm looking forward to this chat. My guest today, David, I'm going to let introduce himself in a minute here. Um, David is uh, head of product marketing at Alkira and he'll tell you a little bit about Alkira as well. David, welcome to the show. Would you quickly introduce yourself and Alkira, please? Sure, thank you very much, James, sure. for having me. Really excited uh, to be with you guys here. Um, it's a good, uh, good opportunity to talk about uh, what we do. Um, so yes, uh, David Klebanov, um, I've been uh, in the networking industry for about uh, uh, 20 plus years. So I've done uh, all kind of uh, all kind of things. I've done uh, uh, corporate IT, I've done professional services, I've done vendors, uh, Cisco, uh, startups. Uh, we've, uh, we've been uh, in a previous round, we've been uh, with the startup called Viptela, which started this whole sort of a multi-billion dollar SD-WAN market. Right, so um, now we are on to the next one, which is Alkira, right? Um, and uh, of course, we're going to talk uh, more details throughout uh, the the next half an hour, right? But uh, just as a um, highlight, right? So we are we are a networking company. Uh, we are operating within uh, kind of within the networking domain, right? And specifically, we address things that have to do with uh, uh, cloud networking, but not just in the cloud. I guess we'll, we'll touch on that too, but we do cloud, we do outside of the cloud, we do across the cloud, to the cloud, uh, no clouds at all, just enterprise networking. So a lot of uh, a lot of cool things, and uh, we have a very interesting kind of approach uh, approach to that. So um, so yeah, happy to be here, James. Very good. Okay. Well, I think the best way to start this conversation is just to talk about the way that cloud has cloud adoption has changed the way that we do networking. Um, we used to have this sort of um, static, uh, big maybe data center or corporate headquarters or something where we did networking, and then in some cases some branch offices. But it was pretty finite, and as networking um, has changed with the cloud adoption and multi-cloud adoption, which makes it even more tricky, things look quite a bit different. Having had a front row seat to that, could you just kind of tell us a little bit about how has the way we connect sites and also users to sites changed as businesses adopt clouds, uh, sometimes more than one? Right. Yeah, so that's um, it's it's a good point. Uh, we're definitely seeing if we kind of take a, a bit of a historic look, right, and we we'll see where the networking industry has been uh, relative to other IT IT disciplines such as you know storage, uh, compute, um, and if we if we look at what happened in those, we can kind of very cleanly track that they have uh, moved from the early days of. Uh, you know, your application is deployed uh, on a physical server. There is one application for one server. And these were kind of the early days of, of that. Uh, then we virtualization kicked in and we said, well, you know, there's a better way to utilize those resources. And why do we have to have one to one mapping? So let's take applications. Let's put multiple applications. Uh, let's virtualize that into um, into virtual machines and let's put them on top of a common x86 infrastructure and uh, hence you have uh, the virtualization era that kind of started right you have vmware of the world and and kvm and uh, linux uh, containers and all the all the good stuff and uh, um, then the cloud kicked in right uh, aws came to to the scene and uh, and everybody's like oh my god this is awesome uh, we're gonna we're gonna just go to the cloud and instead of just owning our own, um, you know, infrastructure and our own compute and storage. We're just going to, um, you know, rent it, right? We're going to go to cloud and we're going to consume this as a service. And uh, and today, when you uh, think about uh, how 
um, you know, applications and compute and storage are being deployed. Um, you know, it's a cloud first strategy. Everybody's like, yes, I got to go to the cloud. I actually have to explain why I'm not going to the cloud uh, because the clouds have matured so much. And, um, you know, AWS reInvent just happening right now and we all observing um, the innovation that happens, that happens from there. Um, so when you look at what happens in networking, you see the networking can have kind of been trying to match that up until the point there was this kind of a hardware driven world of, uh, of the 90s and the early 2000s. And then network virtualization kicked in uh, with some, you know, some, some acquisitions and some, some developments. You have the, you know, the Cisco's of the world with ACI, VMware with the, then NSX. So virtualization kicked in and that, that produced uh, good results. Um, but uh, when you see, that's kind of where it stopped. As an application, applications and compute and storage uh, moved into into the cloud. The applications really kind of, or sorry, network really kind of didn't make that 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 final step uh, towards that evolution, right? And uh, and what we're really seeing is that that is one of the fundamental thing that uh, that the customers that we're working with and just general enterprises are just lacking is that sort of a cloud-like approach, the cloud-like thinking. Uh, uh, for networking that really kind of says, well, now, now my network can operate by the same principles that my um, cloud compute and cloud storage and cloud applications operate. Right? Um, so really seeing that as kind of the next frontier for the networking, we, we call this a, a cloud era and uh, really kind of seeing how networking plays uh, place in, uh, in that space. So when I get a chance to talk to somebody who is kind of uh, speaking with a lot of customers and getting to gauge where they're at, I always like to ask, what is your sense for where the majority of folks are at on the spectrum of, you know, they've gotten all the way to the ideal that you're going to describe, the way Alkira does things, and at the other end of the spectrum is, you know, three steps back where you were just describing the way things used to be. As you're out there talking to folks, where are most people on that spectrum? Right. Uh, good question. Right. Um, so, cloud networking. If we if we if we really kind of focus on on cloud networking. So, cloud networking is not new. Right. People were doing networking uh, in the cloud uh, before. Uh, you know, in the earlier days too. Is the question is is that how do you achieve that? What is the uh, what is the level of expertise that you need? Uh, what is the level of investment that you need to put in there? Do I need to buy new hardware? Do I need to deploy new software in order to make it happen? So you can, we can kind of see customers are being uh, spread throughout this entire spectrum. Um, and very, very sort of significant majority of the customers, if not all of the customers, are in some sort of a variant of a do-it-yourself approach. And there's multiple, way, multiple ways that you can do that, right? Some have gone through co-locations and uh, sort of, you know, established a footprint in those co-locations and procured the uh, necessary gear and uh, high-speed cross-connects into the cloud and have made it work like that and also put some, you know, network services like firewalls in those co-locations. Uh, some have said, well, you know what, I'm going to build things inside the cloud. So they've gone and deployed uh, software solutions within the cloud, software routers, uh, software network services inside the cloud and made it work like that. Uh, some have leveraged SD-WAN technology as an on-ramp into that. So all of those are kind of variants of um, uh, do-it-yourself approaches of uh, people kind of, you know, making cloud um, accessible to them, right? So, um, so like I said, uh, things have been happening for, for a while. It's just a matter of how complex it is, how expensive it is, how much time do you have uh, uh, to invest in this and how much tolerance your organization has to allow you sort of as a, as a network, network engineer to, to, have that, uh, to have that luxury of, of time and budget uh, to go and do it. And is there a better way of doing it? So you mentioned um, networking needing to evolve and to become more cloudy. Compute did, storage did. Um, the way I heard it was networking has been a little bit behind and, and for a lot of companies, they need to get that one to a more cloudy approach. One of the questions I have for you about that is, in, in other types of cloud consumption, one of the biggest things that changed was the economics. What are your thoughts on how, as businesses adopt a cloudy way of doing networking, that will change the economics of networking? Uh, you're absolutely right. 
uh, everybody everybody has a dollar sign you know on their forehead <laughs> no matter what you do for the organization you got to have to be you got to be cognizant of the fact that uh, what you're doing is kind of you know you you, you ask money like businesses uh, it is always uh, has always been uh, you know an expense for an organization um so the economics definitely changes and the fact is that uh, um just like you said the um, um the model with the um compute storage applications that are moving to the cloud is a consumption based model which is you know i deploy a virtual machine i pay for it i instantiate a, a storage volume i pay for it i send so and so much traffic between my vms i pay for it i send traffic into the cloud or out of the cloud i pay for it so it's really kind of a paper uh, paper use type thing and uh, networking has kind of never followed that model and networking was always pay up front uh, you got to build something and you got to build something for the next five years. So, you know, you got to pay for this now and then um, and then it's going to last you for the next three, five, seven, whatever, whatever years. And that has been kind of the philosophy and the mindset of the uh, of the network is, is doing that. So as uh, you know, as applications and storage and all the all the other things are moving to the cloud and enjoying this kind of a paper paper use approach um, networking. Is, is, is the next question is that, well, wh why can't we have networking do the same thing? Why can't I pay for what I consume? Why can't I just pay for what I deploy? And when I consume it, I pay for it. If I don't consume it, I don't pay for this anymore. I send a gig of traffic, I pay for it. I didn't send a gig of traffic, I don't pay for it. I deploy the site, you know, I pay for this connector. I don't, you know, I decommissioned this, I don't. Same thing for cloud, I deployed the cloud workload. I have connectivity to it. I have a certain bandwidth to it, certain capacity to it. I pay for it. I don't. I de decommissioned it. I don't. So um, that kind of uh, um, you know that kind of philosophy um, um, in in the networking is is something that was also uh, also missing. So I'm going to ask you in a little bit about um, actually building uh, a more cloudy approach to networking, but um, I'm going to save that for a little bit later. The Connectivity between clouds and sites, if we think of that as sort of the plumbing, once that's in place, yeah. enterprises do all kinds of things on top of that, another layer up, and we often call that network services. <clears throat> I'm talking about things like um, firewalling or WAN optimization. And as we change the architecture, how we need to approach network services changes too. Um, one of the, the specific ways that comes to mind for me is a lot of that becomes more distributed. Used to be that you could put a big HA pair of firewalls at the network perimeter and there you go. That approach doesn't really hold in the cloud era. What are your thoughts about how network services and our approach to delivering them needs to change as networking becomes more cloudy? Yeah, you, you're absolutely right, James. It it doesn't quite work for uh, for the cloud world in you know from from several angles, right? Uh, this uh, big you know big big boxes like big metal, right? That you deploy in your data center and funnel everything through it um, doesn't quite work in a in a in a cloud world, right? In a cloud world, everything like you say, everything is distributed, uh, and the fact that applications are moving from the data centers into the cloud. Uh, always becomes a um, almost becomes a necessity for this network services that are servicing these applications, and this could be firewalls, load balancers, like you said, WAN optimization, uh, DNS, DHCP, IP address management, uh, load balance, whatnot, right? Um, kind of have to tag along for the journey, right? And uh, and the idea is that uh, when your application move, they find uh, a very kind of a nice home for them in the cloud. Uh, because these clouds were built around this concept of compute and storage. Uh, but when you think about the networking and network services, um, it's not such a not such a cozy place to be uh, for uh, for this uh, for these entities, right? And if you just think about um, what it takes to deploy um, a firewall, and uh, not just deploy the firewall, what it takes to route the traffic to the firewall, uh, what it takes to make sure this this traffic is symmetrically routed to the firewall. How do you make sure that firewall is, uh, is scalable and not just scalable statically like i'm going to create you know 10 instances of firewall for you know my rainy day but uh, how do i create enough instances to accommodate my traffic flows but then if my traffic flow grows i'm going to spin up more of them and auto scale that and if it if it subsides i'm going to auto scale it down 
So all of these elements, they are very, very challenging. They're very um, sort of for compute guys. They're very obvious because that kind of compute and storage have been operating like that for you know decade and a half. But in many of these network deployments, um, it's it's very foreign to those network deployments, right? Um, and uh, in really need kind of a, a smart way of doing that. Uh, because the traditional way of just taking this uh, appliances, virtualizing them, putting them in the cloud, and then using traditional networking mechanisms to steer traffic to them, um, it just it creates, um, creates a lot of complexity. Yeah, so I was just about to ask about something that's kind of in that same train of thought. If you were to do that and just go deploy, uh, you know, an OVA of that network appliance at every site, there's there are some advantages that come with that level of distributedness, um, especially in terms of like scalability and stuff like that. But it's a management nightmare. I mean, trying to keep all those things, uh, you know, uh, so what I'm looking for, like the same, <laughs> keeping them all with the same configuration, or I should say the correct configuration and managing performance and security and all this stuff becomes a total nightmare. Um, how do you know, uh, cloud era networking services done the right way help with those sorts of things, with, with managing it uh, and keeping it manageable. Right. You're absolutely right, James. Um, there's kind of a, two extremes, right? You have the uh, everything in the data center, which is everybody kind of gotten into the point uh, in the last 10 years uh, or so that this is not a good model. Right. Putting everything in your data center is not a good model because that you need to backhaul everything to the data center. It's easier to manage. Right. I don't have as many of them. Right. So my let's say firewalls and my security policy is really easy to manage because there's only you know, a handful of them. But obviously I need to make a pretty significant investment in there and everything. You know, I paying you know, the cost of sending the traffic there from latency standpoint and capacity in the data center. Uh, the other extreme is the branches. So, okay, let's just you know distribute everything. Let's just distribute the heck out of it and put everything in the branches. Uh, but then, exactly like you say, it's a, it's it's an administrative nightmare, right? How do I make all of these policies consistent? How do I make sure that uh, because now I've gone from just a handful of uh, touch points into tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of touch points? So that that's a nightmare, right? So the kind of the mid-tier approach is is what we are seeing, and um, the most uh, the most interesting, the most appealing is um, is a concept of I'm going to put my services where it's not too far from the applications and users, um, so it's not quite in a data center, but not too close to them as to be in every single branch and just making sure they're just you know sort of causing this explosion of an administrative uh, uh, point of uh, control. Right. So finding this sweet spot of where this network services live is is really is really the challenge. And uh, obviously, we we have our take at, at Alkira how we how we do that. We do that with uh, what we call a cloud exchange points, which are distributed points of presence of an Alkira service, which is where your network and your network services converge. Uh, on this uh, cloud exchange point, that's when your sites connect, that's when your clouds connect, that's when your data centers connect and co-locations and users, and that's also where things get serviced. That's where your firewalls live, that's where your uh, load balancers would live, that's where your DNS, DHCP, and IP address management would live. So all of this. So it's a, it's a, it's a meeting point between, between your on-premise stuff, your cloud stuff, and your network services, and we feel that this is this is really a very optimal place to put it because it's 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 right there, not too far, not too close, um, right? Just the right amount of it. That makes a lot of sense. So while we're on the subject of lots of things to keep straight, uh, there's definitely a security aspect of that as well. The more things there are to keep straight, the higher the potential attack surface, you know, the more likely that you could make an error and leave something exposed. So I think network admins are up there on the list of, of folks who are, you know, hesitant to to give over control, right? Maybe maybe only storage people beat them. <laughs> storage people are like, don't touch my storage. Um, you know, net, network admins are up there too. And uh, I think some of that is, uh, you know, their, their concern about performance and stuff like that, but a big part of it is security too, right? And so 
as we move into a cloudy approach to networking, what are your thoughts on security and um, is that moving us in a, as we move to a more cloudy approach to networking, would the default be to become more secure or is it going to cause us to become less secure and have to compensate? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Um, I, I agree with what you said is that uh, network engineers have not, uh, have not been historically folks who are, uh, you know, like I'm going to relinquish control. Uh, it's like, no, it's like, it's my network. I, I took a pride in this network. I built this network. Um, you know, I, I got some certifications to prove that I'm I'm capable of doing that. So so that we, we certainly see see that right. Uh, and and it's there's been trends in the industry for the last like 20 years where there's been things coming along. Like I don't know, I remember the early days of like IP telephony, where the uh, the old PBX guys were like really afraid that uh, this entire IP telephony is going to just you know eat their lunch, right? What ended up being is that they just converted their skills from you know punching things into just going into uh, into the web interfaces and just provisioning IP telephony this way. So everything is changing. Uh, the network is the network is changing. The IP telephony, the voice world has changed 20 years ago. Uh, the networking is changing and security is, is also changing, right? Um, yeah, we know that security folks, they also like to kind of take pride in what they do. And, and I've worked with a fair amount of security folks in my, uh, in my career. You know, their default answer is no. Kind of like you know the, the last rule in the firewall is it deny everything so so the first thing is that the first thing you come and say can i do this no um uh, it's it's not secure it's not protected um so when you when you move things into the cloud it's it becomes you know exponentially worse uh, because it's it's out of your control um when things were your data center and you had control um it was kind of a negotiation tactics um, but when things move into the cloud, it's a whole different game uh, because things are out of your control. So there's definitely a um, need to do um, some, you know, some housekeeping with firewalling. And we talked about that. Um, but uh, it's more than that. It's how do you secure the traffic uh, connectivity, right? How do, you, uh, how do you make sure that everything is encrypted? How do you make sure that everything is encrypted at scale? How do you make sure that you maintain and sort of you know, operational logging for things that are happening. So if somebody came and said, can you prove that, you know, you know are we are troubleshooting, are we trying to get to the root cause of a certain security incident? Uh, can you give us, like, what happened? Tell us what happens, what do you see? So um, there's a lot of that that uh, becomes uh, a bit of a black hole when it moves to, uh, to the cloud, uh, because, because, you know, clouds are a service, right? And, uh, and as a service, you don't get, uh, um, you know the full exposure of what happens in there. Uh, so, so things um, things like um, like I said, traffic encryption and logging and uh, being able to see what's happening, who is being who is attacking whom, where the traffic hotspots are, things like that. These are these are very very important things, and uh, we feel that uh, they were important before, and they are very important when things are moving to the cloud. So all of those things. Um... They're, they're the things that I think cause people to be resistant to giving up control. It's, it's that um, when it's my network that I built and that runs on-prem, um, I can see the things, I can know where they're coming from, I can, you know, one of the challenges with cloud adoption is just this, this notion of visibility. Can I see what I need to see to make the decisions I need to make, to make the, you know, fixes I need to fix? And so what are your thoughts on specifically towards networking, um, how to make sure that as we adopt a cloudy approach to networking, we maintain visibility? Right. Um, it's, it's, it's a very good point. Uh, this entire day two operations um, is, a, is a very critical point because you can't really, um, you can't really run your network when, um, on fairy dust. Right, like you, you gotta have some, uh, you gotta have some concrete uh, data to show how things are behaving, how things are performing, uh, with everything is up and down, things like that. Right, it's you, you would never be able to run a network if you or healthy network if you never had uh, ne had these things. Right, and when things move into the cloud again, I know we we mentioned that a few times already, but when things move into the cloud, things change, and they change because you do relinquish control. Um, of the infrastructure uh, to the cloud. 
And how do you get the same level of visibility, the same level of troubleshooting, the same level, level of logging that um, you as a network engineer kind of had in your data center because you had the proper tool set for it. And now it moves into the cloud and all of the tool set, well, I wouldn't say it becomes irrelevant, but becomes challenging because these tools were not built with cloud in mind. They're not cloud aware, they're not cloud native, they're not, they're not really, they don't really understand the, you know, the, the dynamics of the cloud itself and the, the cloud infrastructure, right? And, and, and worse than that, every cloud is different. So if you did manage to figure it out in AWS and your business takes you into Azure and you're now extending your network and security into Azure, guess what? Azure works uh, in a different way than AWS. So that tool set that you've built may not may no longer be completely relevant to what you're doing in, in that other cloud. So this whole idea of the multi-cloud really challenges not only uh, challenges organizations not only from networking and security standpoint but also from this operational side uh, you know i have visibility i may have built some tool set on aws and that works fairly well but then i start adding you know microsoft azure workloads and all of a sudden it's like hmm, i'm not quite sure what is the traffic that goes between aws and azure and uh, which which of that goes to the firewall so things of that, things of that nature are very, very challenging to to the organizations. We we see this all the time, and uh, that's why we kind of took this approach of developing this this uniform, ubiquitous platform that extends across all the clouds, and it takes care of all the networking and uh, network connectivity and security needs, but also gives you this single pane of glass for all of the operational tasks that you need to do around visibility, troubleshooting. Uh, you know, things like that. So we're about out of time here at the top of the hour. Uh, I want to ask you about Alkira builds a platform to enable all the things that we've just talked about. But the reality for most organizations is uh, when, they, when they adopt a platform like that to help them, in this case, do more cloudy networking, um, there's still a whole bunch of things that they have already bought, provisioned, and rely on that they're not just going to throw away. So my question for you is how do people adopt something like the Alkira platform and tie that in to the other things they're going to continue doing? And what is the kind of, you know, the, the connectivity between the two look like? And that's both, I'm asking that both um, architecturally speaking, but also organizationally speaking. You know, how do they, how do they manage their legacy network and their cloudy network at the same time? Because really they'll, they'll probably coexist, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a good point. Um, there is no greenfield, right? Uh, we we are not that lucky, <laughs> and network engineers are not that lucky uh, to have uh, uh, to have the fortune of um, you know deploying greenfield uh, greenfield environments because obviously greenfield is easier. You don't have to carry over legacy. Um, so how do you interoperate with your existing environments? That's that's something we're seeing. You know. Every single, every single day, every single customer that we uh, we encounter. Um, so it, it really depends on where where customers are in their journey. Uh, we know that um, uh, customers have invested in all kind of connectivity needs uh, prior to that. Uh, some are on MPLS networks, some are on SD WAN networks, uh, and so we know that internet is taking uh, is taking you know taking over a lot of the connectivity needs. We know that that was the premise behind SD WAN uh, in the kind of the early 2010s. Uh, and going going forward. So uh, depending on how your sites, how your offices are connected into the network, uh, connecting them into the Alkira platform, into those uh, Alkira cloud exchange points, um, there's sort of several connectivity mechanisms that we support. Um, you can do this through IPsec connection from, from remote locations. You can do uh, regional handoffs from your MPLS network. Where you can do um, you know, dedicated connectivity from your co-locations. So there's quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, mechanisms of how you can onboard your on-premise environments into, into Alkira. On the cloud side, of course, we're completely cloud native. So we leverage all the underlying tool sets of the clouds. And so we kind of connect your cloud workloads into those Alkira cloud exchange points. So, um, and then one, one last thing I want to touch on is you said organizationally is that you're absolutely right. Um, it's not just the technology is changing and the technology landscape is changing, but organizationally um, running things um, sort of in a cloudy way and running things as a service, which is really kind of the, the punchline behind all of this is that how do I turn my network 
not just be cloud-like, but be as a service consumed, right? Which really opens that level of uh, level of agility that we talked about, and uh, uh, that really changes the 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 organizational sort of approach to that uh, of uh, who is responsible for who, the separation of duties, the budgets, who where the budgets go into. So, so a lot of a lot of interesting conversations we're having with customers that are exploring this sort of a cloud-like networking approach and and as a service philosophy and as a service um, uh, approach to the uh, to the networking. Very good. Well, uh, that takes us to the top of the hour. It's been a fun chat, folks. If you're watching and you enjoyed this Gorilla Guide Q and A. Uh, there's lots, lots more Gorilla Guide resources available to you for free at gorilla.guide. You can go there and download those. Um, if you would like to attend more actual tech media events, some of them featuring Alkira, where you get to see and hear more about what they do, um, and likely a demo, I would imagine, you could come and see that there. You can view all of the upcoming events at events.actualtechmedia.com, and you can register there. Specifically for more about Alkira, if you just want to go and dig in right now, you can head over to the Alkira website. That's alkira.com slash demo if you want to get a little stick time and see what it's like. And of course, follow them on uh, their social channels. And finally, uh, you can follow David directly. David's on Twitter at David Klebanov. And um, David, it's been awesome having you on the show. I had a great chat. I wish we had an hour instead of half an hour. Thanks for doing it with us. Thank you so much, James, and uh, it's been a pleasure.